You hear that? That's the mating call of the Northmen. They want to fuck us. Well, I haven't had a good fucking week. I'm ready for one. <laughs> they say every ironborn man is worth a dozen from the mainland. Aye. Do you think they're right? Aye. Aye. We die today, brothers. We die bleeding from a hundred wounds with arrows in our necks and spears in our guts. But our war cries will echo through eternity. They will sing about the Battle of Winterfell until the Iron Islands have slipped beneath the waves. Every man, woman and child will know who we were and how long we stood. Agar and Gelmar, Wex and Urzen, Stig and Black Lauren. Ironborn warriors will cry out our names as they leap onto the shores of Seaguard and Faircastle. Aye. Mothers will name their sons for us. Aye. Girls will think of us with their lovers inside them. Aye. And whoever kills that fucking horn blower will stand in bronze above the shores of Pike. Aye. What is dead may never die. What is dead? He'd never shut up. It was a good speech. Didn't want to interrupt. Hello! Every time we roll up in their neighborhood, they pack their shit and take off. They're afraid of the operators. Good to go? Hey, tonight they will fight. Tonight we will kill them. Every fucking body militiaman that is there will fucking die. Whoever does not have the stomach for this fight, let him depart. Pay him his money to speed his departure, since we wish not to die in this man's company. Whoever returns safely tomorrow morning will rouse himself every year on that day, show his neighbors scars, and tell them Bella's stories of all their great feats of battle. And these stories you will teach your son. And from this day until the end of the time, we shall be remembered. We you. We happy with you. We band of brothers. Whoever sheds his blood with me shall forever be my brother. And those men too afraid to go will think themselves lesser men, as they have heard how we have fought and died together. <laughs> I had to do that, y'all. Y'all know I had to do that. <laughs> All right. What is up, YouTube? What is up? Dirty Harry here with my post All Star Break thoughts. All right, Dirty Harry, I'm making NBA videos, wrestling videos, whatever the hell I want to think about. In case you didn't know. All right, so a lot of teams now are rallying their troops for a final push to the playoffs. The dominant teams are in the huddle about how are they going to protect the ground they've taken. You know, what should any and every NBA fan be looking at to judge whether or not their team will make it? To the playoffs or stay where they are you know let me start by saying don't look at your starters don't look at your superstars don't look at them right now look at your team's bench if you have a terrible bench you ain't going nowhere and even if you do go somewhere you ain't winning shit um look at your team's current place in the standings and expect them to stay where they are if their bench is not elite in any way you know could get into which teams have the best benches but i mean over in the west no doubt, Clippers and Spurs, but you know, I'm I'm not even gonna get into that. It's too long a video. All right, I gotta keep it short because I gave y'all that nice intro. All right, okay. So we're midway through the season. A lot of stars and superstars are going to need more rest to get ready for the playoffs. You got 30 games left, and if your team isn't in the top eight, you're either praying for LeBron to get hurt or you're praying for Tim Duncan to tear his ACL. You know, it's not nice, and rather unhuman but it's what we fans are we're not human we're fans people we crazy you know so your team season is likely to be over if you're not in the top eight right now and you don't have a bench all right on to the next point what do i think of d rose saying he won't play for the rest of the season personally rose answered it that way because he's tired of repeating himself ever since he tore his acl for the last close to a year 
Every day he meets a fan on the street. Hey, can I have your autograph, D-Ro? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, when you call that? He's heard that every day for the last year. You know, so he's tired of answering again and again. He's a human being, and no one likes to repeat themselves again and again. You know, as a fan of D-Rose's, uh, a dick writer, yeah, call me whatever you want. I, I fucking love D-Rose and watching him play. But I was personally pissed when I heard him say that. And it's like, I understood you don't want to put yourself at risk for another tear or another injury. Let a lot of people down, plus all the endorsement deals be signed. But if you watch the NBA season at all this year, it don't matter what team you're watching. You just turn it on, and you're going to see a hashtag return D-Rose commercial. You know, him walking to the stands looking sweet as hell and shit. You know, it's kind of like, if you're not going to come back, man, don't make a million commercials saying you're going to come back. Be on YouTube. Yeah, I'm working hard, y'all. I just want to play, man. And then you say that, you know. But I understand why you said that, you know. Throwing all those Twitter hashtags, you know. It broke my heart to hear him say that, but it's like, he coming back, man. He coming back. But what would the Bulls do if Rose does not come back? Well, take a page out of Indiana's book and win with defense, you know. It shouldn't be hard because... That's what we do anyway, with and without roles. We've always been defense, defense, you know. And I think we could, off the defense alone, we could win the Eastern Conference because it's the Eastern Conference. But come finals, we'd get smacked real bad by the Western Conference, you know. We've been able to, you know, push teams around with their defense. Teams like Miami, they don't have the size of the, you know, they're not physical enough to out-rebound us, but the Spurs would make us look like a joke in the finals, and so would teams like Memphis or, uh, what was it, um, Denver, if they make it. The Lakers, who are a real Cinderella team right now, would really embarrass us. Thoughts on Miami? Wait till the playoffs. You know, if you're only watching Sports Center highlights of, you know, LeBron's dunk of the week, or whatever, you, you won't get what I'm saying. You know, everyone's on LeBron's nuts because he's having such a great year right now. And it's like, sit down and actually watch a game. Miami ain't really going hard right now. They, they're they they're just, uh, you know, they're sissy fighting with teams. They're not really turning it up yet, you know. They're winning the key games that way. You know, they'll turn up for a key game against a rival. But all they're doing is trying to send a message, really. You know, Scottie Pippen James... He's out there hard charging because this is his year. You know, he wants to break some records, you know. But he's probably the only player on the team that's just hard charging. He's not the player that I'm scared of in the playoffs. No one's scared of LeBron in the playoffs, you know. In the fourth quarter, I want Scottie Pippen James to be handling the ball. I want him to be jacking up shots because you know he's going to miss them. You know, LeBron is a choke artist and always will be a choke artist, you know. D. Wade is the one I'm scared of. Ray Allen is the one I am terrified of because he has broken a lot of Bulls fans' hearts, especially in that one playoff appearance that we had against the Celtics. I think it was uh, Rose's rookie year. They fucking, Ray Allen shot lights out and just buried us in the playoffs. You know, D-Wade and Ray Allen are the people I'm scared of. No one is scared of Scottie Pippen James with the ball in his hand in the fourth quarter. We embrace that. We're like, yes, you know, he's gonna choke, he's gonna, uh, you know. We want them to hold the ball in the final minutes. But what I give Miami credit for is they did the smart thing. You know, they didn't ask LeBron to carry that weight because he's like two for 56 out of his whole career on game-winning shots. So they just surrounded him with players that could do it, you know. So maybe I'll forever be able to call Scotty Pippen James a choke artist. But at the end of the day, he'll be winning championships. So he'll be laughing at these videos later on. Speaking of Miami... The Lil Wayne situation. Uh, apparently, Lil Wayne came out and said uh, he had sex with uh, Chris Bosh's wife. Um, I haven't seen her picture yet. I don't want to see her picture, but I hope she's good looking if that's what he's saying. And also, is this a lot? Well, let's look at who it is. You know, If it was just some random fan, some random dude saying he did it, you'd be like, well, he just wants fame. But Lil Wayne's got fame. He's got a lot of money. Why does he have to lie about it? It's Chris Bosh's wife. If it was like LeBron's wife or something, it'd be, it'd be a different story. You know, maybe he's just trying to sell some records. But it's Chris Bosh. He's the forgotten third king. You know, I, I don't know. I don't think Wayne is lying about it just because it's like, why does he have to lie? You know, you kind of look at Eminem and Mariah Carey, you know, that situation. Why does Eminem have to lie about that? No one cares about this. You know, no one cares about Chris Bosh, you know. 
really, you know. The casual media doesn't care about Chris Bosch. You know, if it was LeBron, it'd be a whole bigger deal. But it's Chris Bosch, you know. So it's like, mm. you may see him mention it for a day, but forget about it unless someone gets hurt. What team should Miami be afraid of in the playoffs? Brooklyn. I know a lot of people have been dogging Brooklyn lately, but honestly, the Nets this year are a major upgrade from what they have been. They're a team that's built for the playoffs. You got Darren Williams, Joe Johnson, Gerard Wallace, Lopez, and Humphreys. That's a team that can get hot and bury just about anybody, you know, depending on if they're healthy or not. You know, the big question mark with the Nets right now is their bench. You know, they've got a decent bench because they basically adopted our old bench, you know, C.J. Watts and Keith Bogans. But I honestly, I got to look at it more before I can give you a complete assessment. By meaning I got to look at it more, I mean, I got to watch some Nets games more. You know, just pulling up a chart on, you know, ESPN ain't, ain't going to do it. You got to watch. You got to see how the team actually plays in the system, you know. You can have a bunch of superstars as your bench or your starting lineup, and they just might not be able to play together. Lakers. All right. Um, after Brooklyn, Indiana. Very physical team. They're going to make Miami look like a bunch of Pop-Tarts in the uh, postseason. They're going to make anyone look like like a damn pillow defense in the postseason because they're physical. They're crafty, smart team. They play real physical. And I honestly think that the worst playoff like, playoff Lay out, line out that we can see for the Heat would be play Brooklyn in the first round, play Indiana in the next round, and then play Chicago in the final round because they're going to get worn down. What about the Knicks? New York has all the tools to win this year. Superstar, check. Defense, check. Deep bench, check. Veteran knowledge, check. A decent coach, check. Now, I've criticized them for all them doing is just carpet bombing with threes over the course of the season. You know, but they've got the same story that Miami has, really. It all depends on how, who they play. You know, I guarantee you they won't go down in the first round this year, though. I can guarantee that. Unless they have to play the Celtics or the 76ers with Andrew Bynum patrolling the paint. It'd be great to see Chandler versus Bynum in the playoff series. Bynum gave us good news saying he's going to practice in two weeks, but you know how that goes. Tomorrow we'll probably hear some news of another freak accident, you know, he, slammed his finger in a door or some shit, you know. It's all on how Bynum gets reintegrated back into um, Philly's uh, defense. Thoughts on ATL. They lost Lou Williams for the rest of the season. Same situation in Chicago without a lockdown defense and the best Eastern Coast. The fall of ATL will probably come. They're not going to win a championship this year. Um, Celtics. All right. Boston, Boston, Boston. Let me give you a quick synopsis, and it should shut up anyone saying the Celtics are done. Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Jason Terry. Enough said. <laughs> Milwaukee, same situation as before. They're not really a threat to any of the top teams. I don't see that, to be honest. You know, the Nets, Knicks, Bulls, Pacers, their Heat, in a seven game series, would destroy them. The Bulls are the only team who would probably be given a run against them just because. The Bulls can be lazy sometimes. Toronto. I can't grade the Raptors. They made a trade. They're a big question mark. Any NBA team can go on a four-game winning streak. If the best players in the world, it can happen to any team. But just keep an eye on them, you know. Um, and that's basically my Eastern Conference thoughts. If I did not mention your team, your team is probably garbage and not going anywhere this year. I'm excited for the Bulls heat game in a few days. It would be insane. If Rose came back on that day and the Heat just got blown out by the Bulls. But I'm 50 50 on who's going to win. You know, it's always a 50 50 game unless the referees are up. You know. But Miami's looking to send a message to Chicago this time. Last time Chicago beat them. And ever since the Big Three came together, Chicago has been the only team that has consistently been a threat to them. So they're going to be looking to send a message. You know, playoff time coming up, they want to send a message. So these games always feel like they need a bit more. Uh, don't know if I'll make a video about it, but check out Jimmy Butler. Fucking monster. That's all. Love each other. Enjoy the game.